Hey guys, welcome to the Speak Strength Podcast. My name is Jason Winley. I'm here with my friend Sarah Leverett. I think she has an amazing story and you guys are going to get a whole lot of nuggets out of this conversation. So listen closely. Sarah, is there anything you'd like to do to introduce yourself before we get going and asking you all these fun little questions? Uh, no, I'm just ready to talk about Life. what you want to talk about. <laughs> what I want to talk about. All right. So really the reason I want you guys to listen to what Sarah has to say is we end up talking after class and we always cut our conversation short. And I've always thought maybe one of these days we should record one of our conversations because a lot of information comes out or we have a lot of questions and uh, some intriguing thoughts that really get discussed. And we, we tackle those on a fun end and sometimes they get really deep. So that's today. But before we get going into some of those topics, let's find out who she is. So she's currently in school getting her master's degree in special education uh, and she switched careers. So she didn't start out getting uh, going into teaching. She's always been involved with with I say always since I've known her, she was involved with the school system. But somewhere along the line, she decided to switch from where she was to go back and get her master's degree. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about that switch and then when you decided, hey, God's calling me to be in special ed and I see a need there and I wanna go serve there. Okay, so I will take you back uh, probably about 12, 13 years ago uh, when I graduated from USC the first time and I was in education and uh, had a degree in English. I started teaching a three-year-old classroom and I was in early childhood for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. This is where I developed a passion for early intervention in the brain. I fell in love with um, the developmental stages and the different milestones and how to reach uh, the kids in the early intervention realm, uh, which has kind of carved a path for me uh, with the special education. So when you were going through the, when you were in preschool and you're working with the three-year-old classroom, were, was there a specific developmental stage that you were like, oh my goodness, I want to learn more about this that you actually dove into? Or did you kind of take them all and kind of learn as you went along? Uh, I would say that for whatever reason, I've always been more really interested in behavior and preventing behavior. Uh, when I moved from the early intervention side of things is, uh, my daughter, when she was born, um, she had some difficulties, something just wasn't right. And, um, it, I looked at it as a curse at that point in my life because I, I kind of was like, oh my gosh, I know too much. I knew something wasn't right. And I knew that I needed to figure out what was wrong. So that kind of became a quest for me. And I tried to figure out, you know, what kind of what her symptoms were and figure out, uh, you know, how we were going to tackle this. And I knew that it was going to be really difficult. During that time, we saw many, many doctors, pediatric neurologists. We saw um, ENTs. We saw Greenwood Genetics. So, uh, and she had. So what were what were some of the symptoms that you were thinking that were a little bit abnormal or that you weren't thinking were or that you were used to seeing in babies that had you that mm-hmm. I guess triggered something in your head that say, I need to go see a doctor? It was simple things as in not being able to uh, pick her head up and, uh, you know, do she wasn't making a lot of noise like her cries were very tiny. Uh, and we there was just something that wasn't quite there. Uh, and she had some what they called was like a a waiter's tip, which is when um, she was wrapped in the umbilical cord uh, around, she had it around her neck and her arms were kind of behind her back for, I don't know how long, but uh, she was delivered kind of a emergency C-section because of inner uterine growth. So she was really, really tiny. And um, in any case, she just had some, she was slow to move, um, muscle wise. Right. And just, we just kind of little by little, we couldn't quite put a finger on it. And we just kind of went around in a circle trying to figure out which specialist was going to walk us through or help us figure this stuff out. Uh, she began physical therapy before she was one. And then shortly after speech and OT and everything like that, 
But uh, I would say that during this time, you know, my I, I had so much background knowledge with the uh, early intervention portion that, you know, I was her biggest advocate. Right. But at the same time, as a mother, it was really hard. And I fell into kind of a depression. And I would say not kind of, but a real one. And it was hard. I mean, it's hard when you are seeing everyone else around you live perfect lives on social media or whatever. Oh, yeah. And here you are, you, you quite, you're not, you're not there. I wasn't, ha- we weren't having the same celebrations. So in any case, uh, long story short, um, I found a gym uh, and a mentor several years ago. And uh, it was kind of my last stitch of happiness. I was told that in order to combat the depression that I I needed to exercise. Mm -hmm. And I was really upset about that. Uh, You were upset about having to exercise to combat the depression? Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I I didn't want that. And I was wanting, uh, certainly wanted an easy way out. And I was very unhappy and, you know, I went to a gym, I signed up for a, a boot camp thing, and um, I just fell in love with exercise. And, and during that time, you know, I kind of had fallen away from uh, my church family and uh, even thinking about God. I was really in a really bad place. So let's, so, go, let's go back a little bit. So you okay. kind of went through, I was going to ask that question. So what kind of put you in that situation when you're like, oh my goodness, I feel like my daughter's disability or my daughter's lack of growth right now seems to be a curse. And was there something that you had growing up or was it that you were working with kids and you said, oh my goodness, why is this happening to me and I'm already helping so many people kind of thing? Right. I I felt as if, you know, I was dedicated so many years to helping other children and uh it felt maybe unfair and it hurt i knew too much i knew um the struggles that were going to happen because of it and it was it was just i mean it's hard and it was a difficult thing for our family it made me really stressed out um which you know and affected the whole family gotcha so in any case um, I think I drifted, uh, I completely drifted away, but I think that was on purpose for sure. Mm-hmm. I think that there's always a time, uh, when, when God seeks you right. and, um, he found me and I think that he found me in a place where I needed, uh, to not be in the, the normal church setting and i was at a gym with a a group of people that you know i was having bible studies with and reading the bible with and i thought that um there were people that were meant to have testimonies and then there were people who were meant to hear testimonies (laughs) and i never ever thought that i would have my own so in any case long story short again um through a mentor and through a group there, you know, I came to know Christ um, and Jesus and it, it, it really just changed my life. And, you know, when you know why you're here and you know why um, you're on the path that you're on, I mean, it just makes perfect sense. So you, um, and so, go so, ahead. so through this time, you've kind of scripted for us kind of like your development of your passion and your why for where you are right now. So you had this situation where your daughter was born with unexpected circumstances and initially you looked kind of down on your situation, which put you in a kind of a spiral, but you were able to find a community which brought you home and gave you a light to look at and they introduced you to Christ. And so that's where you started to, I guess, kind of I say mold. I don't know if that's the right word. Do you feel like you may have been, this might have been a time when you were being molded to kind of do what you were doing now? Yes, I definitely think that, uh, you know, he has made a plan for me for sure and had a, a path was just put out in front of me. And um, I, and I tell this to people all the time. I did not, I'm, 
did not go into special ed because of my daughter. Um, right. Special ed is hard and it is not something that, you know, you would wish on anybody. And it is, it is not easy for me to be in that realm and also be living that realm. Right. Um, so if I had, if I had a choice, I wouldn't, <laughs> but I am, uh, you where know, God put you. I mean, yes, I, I'm doing what I, what I feel I've been called to do. I, uh, I'm drawn to the children who, who need help, you know, just speaking or, um, being heard and who learn differently. So, so that's one of those terms you just said, students who learn differently. And that's, it's interesting you said it at this point in time, because as we're moving into that, almost the, for lack of a better term, I hate to say political correctness, but at the same time, students who learn differently is not an abnormal thing, right? Correct. And so when people think that it's, we use the term irregular, abnormal, but at the same time, most of the time when we have students who learn differently, it's not that they learn completely differently. There's kind of a spectrum. Is there that you would say that these students are figuring out their way through life like everyone else is? Right. Uh, I would say that, you know, there, there's a lot about the brain that we haven't uncovered. Um, it, there's so much, it, it, I mean, that's where you kind of have to start. And with the brain, you can, some things come easier than others. And some children may be born to really understand math, but cannot write or read. Um, that doesn't mean that they can't do it. That right. just means that they have to, um, strengthen the pathway to learn how to do it. Has so, there, has there been anything that you've seen and with your daughters, I guess, as your daughters come through and as your daughters develop that you say, hey, I think that can be done better that you would like to set out and kind of improve upon? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's she blows my mind every day. She has a team of uh, wonderful people and who have been very influential in her life. And she is an instrument for sure. Mm -hmm. Most certainly my instrument. Um, that she is just a gift um, uh, from God. I mean, she. I mean, she really is. I can't even. I can't even put that one into words. But she is so smart, and she is learning and growing and doing anything and everything. Um, you know. Well, I mean, is she is she going to struggle a little bit? Uh, sure, she's going to struggle. But there's nothing wrong with uh, having to work hard to get where you need to where. be need to go yep so we've talked a lot about christ being your center or kind of being called and christ kind of coming down and getting you and saying this is where you need to be did you grow up in church um i was raised catholic so yes he i mean i was raised to to love god and i went to church every sunday or mass every sunday um we we didn't really read the bible so to say but um, did I know God um, before? I don't. I don't think so. I think. I think He finds you when He wants to find you. Um, and sometimes it happens earlier for others. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to um, have it as an adult, um, so I could experience that. And even my kids got to experience it with me. And to live your life uh, for God um, and be Christ-centered and abide in Christ is. I mean, it is a totally different feeling than um, we're going to work every day and not. So right. every single day, I mean, I just feel full. I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. And I don't even, I don't ask too many questions about that. I just keep doing and learning more, as much as I can about uh, how to help children. Are there any circumstances that you anticipate happening as you're continuing to work with kids? We learn differently uh i think it's not going to be easy i think that i'm hard on myself uh and i will want everything to be resolved and i want everything <laughs> to go as planned i want all my intervention strategies to be perfect uh and i know that that's not the case and i know that uh you know but what i do know is that it is so incredibly important um 
to be a person in a child's life or even an adult's life yep. uh, to build that relationship with them. And making that relationship and building a relationship is first and foremost the most important thing that I will spend my time doing where I am that person that that student can come to. Uh, and so feel it may comfortable not. So it may not be all about the technical aspects of what your career is involved with, but may just be standing beside someone and saying, here's a high five or here's a hug. Oh, absolutely. Um, there's something called toxic stress and toxic stress uh, is something that when you are living in, in high increments of um, manifests in the form of like ADHD. Um, it has a lot of the same symptoms mm -hmm. and I think it's very misunderstood and uh, in particular what I've studied over the past four years at USC is behavior and what the reasons, um, you know, how to change behavior and just things in the environment, uh, relationships in the environment are of the utmost importance. You have to meet the needs of the student before you can learn. If you don't feel safe, you're not gonna spend your time learning in the classroom. So if you're worried about what you're gonna eat for lunch, or if you're worried about what's gonna happen at home, you are not gonna be worried about how to do multiplication facts. Right, during almost, class. almost seems very minimal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so you can, it's a vicious cycle. So I, I spent a lot of time working um, with being able to recognize the signs of like trauma or um, environmental effects. That answers kind of the question I was going to ask. So I like the fact that you really dive into building a relationship with the kids you're going to come across. And is there anything, any specific intervention technique that you would like to couple that with or that you're really going to kind of dive into that you've seen work well so far since you've been in school or since you've worked in inside the school? Um, I would just say that being an active listener uh, and spending time to get to know uh, your students, uh, just two minutes of talking about what they're into, um, not if they did their homework or whatnot, but just find out, learn some traits. What, <laughs> what are they doing on the weekend? Right. Um, and what I do find is that the, the more you spend building that type of a relationship with a student when it does come time, yeah. when they do need you, when it is a stressful scenario, oftentimes they look for you. Right. Um, and uh, that part I can't wait for. I'm super excited about graduating uh, this May. So, and ready to, to have my own classroom. So one of the things I thought that was really cool, prior to you going into grad school, you were a teacher's assistant, right? But you took on a lot of responsibility, I'll call it personal responsibility, to, to form a relationship with students, even as a teacher's assistant. That's something that you naturally seem to have gravitated toward. Can you tell us a little bit about your time as a teacher's assistant? And I know there's a couple things that are really cool that you did, including your mindfulness room. Was that a room you did? I thought that was really cool. You remember that? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. Uh, I was all the time just trying new things. I'm about just reaching and building and mentoring. And I had the perfect scenario uh, to do that in. Uh, what I did find was coming out of the classroom, my preschool setting as the teacher and having, you know, 12 kids to hug on me every single morning. Uh, I took it for granted. I, and then, then I got into a big school and had all of these students and I didn't have my own classroom. I didn't belong to anyone. Um, and it was a little overwhelming because I felt kind of sad, like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do about this? So I made it my my passion and, and, and my purpose to build relationships. So uh, I would say that in the morning, uh, morning duty, I was there every single morning um, before 7.15 and ready to, to greet the kids when they came in and then walk them down to breakfast and to the cafeteria for breakfast. And I have so many stories from just that short amount of time in the morning that were, I mean, these kids would look for me in the morning and tell me that they lost a tooth over the weekend or that they went <laughs> to, you know, 
Frankie's fun park or they had a birthday party or whatnot. And it was just so, it was very fulfilling for me. Oh, that's pretty good. And so through all this process, now we've talked a lot about schooling and you moving forward. We talked about your daughter, but you still have three other members of your family, right? You have three kids and you're married and you mm -hmm. took, and you took this workload on. So tell us about that. I'm pretty sure you've got to have a pretty so supportive nuclear unit. So tell me a little bit more about your family and how they were able to support you through this process. Absolutely. My, I mean, my husband is um, there for me and very supportive. It was definitely a family decision for me to go back to school. Mm -hmm. He had to take on a lot of responsibility with the kids as I did most of my coursework on the weekend. Uh, he, you know, takes them to the grocery store mm -hmm. and cooks dinner a lot of times and does laundry. And, you know, he's, has been there, um, through everything. And I would certainly say that, uh, exercise has been my, how I get through it. Mm -hmm. Um, life isn't easy. Uh, marriage isn't easy. School isn't easy, work isn't easy, and my kids aren't easy. And there's just nothing easy about it. Right. Um, exercise is one of those things that I, that I try to do every morning, and which helps me uh, get through the day. It helps me make the best person that I can be for myself. It makes me a better wife. It makes me a better mom. It makes me a better teacher. It makes me a better um, you know, believer. I mean, I just feel like I'm at my best. When you're um, active. When I, and when you're exercising. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Now, as we continue, you didn't really switch careers. So I had that down as a note, but you've been in education most of the time. Did you have any other jobs that you thought helped as you moved towards this? <laughs> or any job, actually, I know you have one, but any job that you think everybody should do at any point in time and why? Okay. So, uh, this is one of those jobs that certainly, um, you know, I'm, when I was in school, I was the kid in the corner who never talked. I was very shy. I had no self, I had no self esteem, no confidence, didn't believe in myself. Couldn't think, I mean, I didn't think I could do anything. I just thought I was just, it, it, I wasn't the per. I wasn't smart. I wasn't, um, somebody who could do anything. Um, but the one thing that I did think that I was okay with was, uh, kids <laughs> babysitting. Um, and that was kind of whatever I, uh, was, a, I'm the first one from uh, both sides of my family to go to college and actually graduate to college. Um, still. And when I was in college, I worked the entire time that I was, um, in school. And um, I did a couple different jobs, but one of the jobs I worked in the service industry in a restaurant. And I really, really think that that has been one of the things that has helped me uh, Open build up. and communicate and yeah. uh, learn how other people think and respond. And it's one of those things that it, you just don't, I don't think people think far enough to it's all about how you treat people. And you know, instead of saying, I, in fact, I, I was a bartender and, you know, we would get this, uh, a, a customer that might say, oh, this is horrible. This drink is horrible. And I would just say, instead of saying, well, do you want to try something else? But you still have to pay for this one. I would say, oh, I'll fix that. So I would take the drink and I would take it over um, back to where the stuff was. And I would splash it with a little bit of Sprite and add a cherry on top. And I would come back over and hand it to them and they loved it. Mm -hmm. um, but did they love it because it tasted that much different or did they love it because I spent the time um, to take care of it and I was nice. So what I think is it's all about how you treat people and you know, you, it is customer service. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not working in a restaurant, um, it's customer service all around. I mean, it's customer service as a teacher, it's customer service as you know, a, a gym owner or as a, you know, person who works, I mean, it's everywhere. Right. It's how you deal with people. I mean, it's something I think is a lost art. Um, I worry about my own kids uh, not understanding that because our communication has gone uh, so Very technical. Yeah, it's a little bit more technical. And, and I mean, there's a lot to be said for that technical change in uh, the way we communicate. 
I've heard arguments for people saying it's still the same. Things happened when the phone came in to play. And then I've heard the argument for the opposite of we spend so much time in technology and it's not the same as the phone. Um, because the, I mean, it's kind of, I guess, the lack of um, sound or the lack of that tone in the conversation that you get when you're actually talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, I think we still have time to see what that's going to look like. But I do see that there's a lot of ways in which that can be diminished in uh, the upcoming generation. But I think there's also a lot of space for good as they continue to use the technology for situations like this, because this is actually really cool that we get to talk across video. Mm -hmm. And when we grew up, the only time talking across video was actually relevant was during um, Back to the Future, the movie. And it was on a huge TV screen. And now we have little phones where we can just talk as is. So um, there's a lot to be said for that. So as we start to kind of come to a conclusion, was there anything you'd like to finish with? Any nuggets of advice that you'd like to give? Um, you did a lot of stuff. You know, if you had to summarize everything you said so far, what would it look like? What would it sound like? I would just say, you know, spend time uh, following what it what what it is that drives you and what you believe you are doing for Christ. Think about that and think about in your heart if that is what what you're living for. And um, things change when you're working for God um, versus uh, yourself mm -hmm. and things just start looking differently and the sky is a little bluer. The air is a little cleaner. I mean, everything is just different and, uh, be okay with the small moments and celebrate the big moments and, um, take care of yourself for sure. And with exercise and everything else, cool, that's, about, that's about it. I think, I mean, I think that's a good way to end. Uh, I really appreciate the time you took to come out and talk to us. And I hope you guys out there enjoyed this as well. I thought she gave a lot of good information. She talked about relationships and how important it is for you guys to form relationships with the people before you try to really engage in any other activities with them. Um, you can't really touch someone unless you've figured out what they're doing and where they come from. And I think that actually drove a lot of things from her past to where she is now. And then when she met Christ, it really just tied everything together. She kind of realized where she's going to be. So I hope you guys got a lot out of that story. I thought it was pretty amazing. I still really enjoy talking with her. So you may see her, may see her on here again at some point in time. But thanks again for listening to the Speak Strength podcast. You guys have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>